Hey everybody, Steven here, and today I am reviewing the new Kraken Elite AIO water cooler from NZXT. The baseline Kraken models here still have an LCD display, so anybody that just wants to get the entry point into AIO water coolers, you still get a great display here, which is great because the previous versions, there wasn't anything. We had the Infinity Mirror and some other versions, but now you actually get that LCD display. Looking at the Kraken Elite though, you still have the same size in terms of the screen at the 2.36 inches, but we're increasing the resolution here. You'll, you're doubling it from 320 by 320 to 640 by 640. The refresh rate is going from 30 hertz up to 60 hertz, and then we're going from 650 nits up to 690 nits. Now, my original plan was to compare this to my Kraken Z53 AIO that I had, but that one ended up going bust. So all the tests that I was going to run, I can't do those anymore. It completely broke down on me, but I will be doing a sound test and a little bit of the pump and the noise that it was making because it was very disruptive for any videos that I wanted to record. With that being said, I am restructuring this video a little bit. Just to let everybody know up front, I am not an in-depth reviewer when it comes to AIOs. I'm going to be doing some tests, but it, this isn't like Gamers Nexus where I'm going to dismantle the pumps and I'm gonna showcase all the different things within that. I'm gonna talk about the features a little bit and some of the different things that it has here, but in a more generalized sense. I will be showcasing more on the software side and what the actual display can do now and the upgrades that we're seeing with that. I wanted to compare the two. Again, unfortunately that can't happen, so I can't show you just how smooth it looks going from the 30 hertz to the 60 hertz here because the display actually finally froze when it broke. But I do wanna showcase that because it is really, really cool to see what they've done in the upgrades with this display. It just looks so much better. But with that being said, let's go ahead and just talk about the specs really briefly here. And when I do get to the test, I do wanna mention also, I've swapped these out for the Air 2 RGB fans. I also have two different models. When I ordered the other one to make sure I had two 140s here, one of them being the newer model, it actually has a little bit more speed to it than the regular baseline model here. But let's start with just the actual products themselves. Still comparing the Z53 to this one though. So starting with the pump here, these are both the same, right? So we have 800 to 2800 plus or minus 300 RPM for the motor speed. The radiators are obviously going to be different because we're going from 240 millimeter with the Kraken Z53 to the 280 here. I will show the size difference there here in a little bit. We talked a little bit about the display. I'm gonna talk about that more in a minute also when I talk about the software. Looking at the fans here though, the Z53, those fans are actually faster in terms of the speed. So it's 500 to 2000 plus or minus 300 RPM. When we're looking at the Kraken Elite here, it's five to 500 to 1500 plus or minus 300 RPM. And that's why I went with the Air 2 here Again, I didn't realize that I had one that was an older model, so it doesn't have that extra room at the top there. It doesn't have that subtle boost, plus or minus 300 RPM, but the new one does with that. Outside of that, the tube length is still the same. We have 400 millimeters with that. And then it just seems like the big upgrade here was really the display. Everything else, for the most part, seems the same. The fans here, looking at the noise, the interesting thing is that the... 140s are actually quieter than the Z53 with the 120s. And again, outside of that, they're pretty similar. We're looking at the difference between mainly just the fans and the display, and then that's about it. I don't know about the internal components. I can't speak to that. Again, wait for the Gamers Nexus video where they actually probably completely dismantle it, but it looks like it's just kind of generally the same with upgrades really being to the display. Looking at the fans here, on the right hand side we have the original one that I had, and then on the left hand side is the newer version. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that it just shows that difference with one not having that plus or minus 300 RPM. It may be the case that it has it, but also looking at the static pressure, the newer one actually has 
a little bit more, which is interesting than the older version. Now with that, how much that's going to change performance, I don't really know. That's also dependent upon your PC case, other fans that you have in there. There's just a lot of other metrics when it comes to performance here that we need to consider. Looking at this on the left hand side, that is the stock fan that you're going to get with this versus the Air 2. The newer ones come with the newer fans if you want the RGB fans that they have because these are just new models that they've created. I didn't want to do that because I already have like five other Air 2 fans in my rig and I didn't want to spend all the money to upgrade everything because I want to keep the look the same for right now. So for right now, I'm just keeping that and sticking with these Air 2s. Maybe down the road I'll upgrade, but that is another option that you could do. And the price can be anywhere from $20 to $40 in terms of the increase that you would see on top of the base price for the AIO. Inside of the box, you'll have the radiator, the LCD display, and then the fans and all of the screws and the plates and all that that you're going to need in order to actually put this onto your PC. You have the two different brackets here. So you have the AM5 slash AM4 one, and then you also have the Intel one. So it depends on the socket type. With this, I am running the Ryzen 7900X here. So I'm going to use the AMD. By default, it has the Intel on there. And with the new AM5 socket, you have basically the screw that'll screw into the motherboard. You have one side that is AM4 and then the other side is AM5. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. The install is pretty straightforward, but let's look at the displays here because there is a subtle difference between the two and it's an upgrade that I think is a quality of life upgrade that I really like. So with this, there's only one input or port that you will plug cables into, which is great because on the Z53, the older versions, there was two. So now they've actually condensed that to the one. You still have the same amount of cables. It's just instead of having this separate one that was a micro USB that went and hooked up to the motherboard, I believe that was for the actual display. You're not needing that now. It just branches off the same cable that you're going to have that actually goes with the fans here. So that is nice because again, you're not running things separate. The thermal paste is pre-applied just like all the other versions here. And again, you have the Intel CPU bracket on this by default. Having these side by side though, it does look like the new Elite in terms of the water block. It's actually slightly bigger. Although if you look at the specs, which this doesn't have this listed on the box for the Z53, for whatever reason, it's actually slightly bigger. But again, side by side, it actually looks like the Elite is slightly bigger. Moving on to just installing this though. So I put the fans on the radiator and then after that, I had to make sure that the AM5 bracket was in the orientation that I would need it to be in order to get the mounting position that I want. I'm not 100% satisfied with the position I ended up with for right now, but I am using the Gamers Nexus recommended orientation with the radiator with the tubes being at the bottom here, just trying to make sure that I don't get any type of air inside of the tubes here. And then I know a lot of people aren't going to like my fan orientation, but the way I have this set up right now is I have two 140 millimeter fans at the bottom that draw in the air and then it exhausts it out of every single end. So through the back, through the front and through the top here. Part of the reason for that is because I paid a lot of money for these Air 2 fans here. I wanna see the lights. If I switch that around, you can't really see them and it just feels like a waste of money. And I don't know how much of an impact on performance, honestly, that's going to have because I am just exhausting so much air and I'm still getting a good amount of draw from the bottom. After that, the fun part starts because you get to plug this in and then plug in all of your cables and then do the cable management. Overall, this was pretty easy and straightforward to install, but let's look at the orientation and what this looked like when I had the 240 on here compared to now the 280. So this is the 140 here, zooming in a little bit closer. You can see that I have space at the bottom and the top here. Looking at the side, you can see the side profile. I even have a little bit of room on the outside here. Shifting over to the 280 though, you can see all that space is now taken up. It's a good fit here. It's kind of snug, but it fits perfect. 
with the height Y60 that I have. If I wanted to get the 360 instead of the 280, I would actually have to mount it to the top. But overall, I am very happy. This is a perfect fit here. And again, I wanted the tubes on the bottom just to make sure I didn't get any type of air perforation in the tubes. But with that being said, once this is all set up, you boot it up and now let's shift over to the main draw, right? The display and I'm going to showcase what you can do in the cam software. So this is the NZXT cam software. It has definitely improved over time, but I'm not going to cover everything to do with the software here. I'm going to showcase just the monitoring side of things. And then we're really going to be looking at the screen here and what it can do. So you have your profiles that you can create. I don't usually mess with that. I just have this on default, but this is where we can see all the information in regards to the PC here, CPU, GPU, RAM network, all of that. Underneath that, we have our system specs, just showing what I actually have here. The cooling, skip two down, and here you get to adjust. I have this on performance mode right now, but we have default, silent, performance, and fixed. Shifting over now to fixed, we're gonna see the temperature obviously increase, but then we shouldn't hear as much on the audio here when I'm talking. And then as you scroll down, you notice that this actually shifted everything to fixed in terms of the pump and then the fans here. You can again create your own if you wanted to. We could add a profile and then make any type of adjustment dependent upon the game or maybe the application that you're going to use. Underneath this we have the keyboard mouse capture card monitor. If you have NZXT gear that follows or falls underneath this then you're going to see it pop up there if it is in one of these categories. Outside of that though, let's shift over to the main draw here with this display. And so the lighting, I have it on rainbow here. I'm not gonna mess with the lighting. I'm just gonna let it go with what it's currently doing, which is the spectrum wave. But with this again, the elite display here, and you can name this if you want to. Let's look at the first thing here, which is just basic. We could dim this if we wanted to. So if we wanted to actually turn this all the way off, you could turn it off. But if it's not bright enough or it's too bright, you could turn that down. We also see that at the very top here. So we could slowly just do that. But this is obviously going to apply it to everything. So this is the global one. And then you have the ones that are specific to the fans or the display. So let's start at the top here because there is a lot going on. So the cool thing here is that you have the integration now. You could upload your own if you wanted to, but they have finally integrated with Giphy, Jiffy, however you want to say it. So you could browse here. By default, you're going to get this page, which is a bunch of circular based things, which makes sense because the display here is a circle. So you could choose any of these. You could also search for whatever you wanted to search for, right? So some of these actually i wanted to do master chief because i do want to point out something with that i like this one right here if we click on it though you get this we get to shrink or increase the size up to a certain point so again if we wanted to make that smaller or bigger we could center it let's save that it's not going to pop up for this one because it is too big supports these file types up to 25 megabytes and under. If it's too large, right here, file too large, select another one or reduce the frames or the size here. So you end up finding this limitation. Maybe over time we see an increase there, but you are limited with that. But I already have a bunch that I've just kind of been messing around with. Once we click on any of these, it's just going to show that GIF or GIF, right? And the display here with the faster response time, it looks really, really smooth, which is awesome. It may take a second for it to catch up as it loads in, but overall, this looks great. It is a nice upgrade from the last version that I had. And again, it may take just one cycle of that and then it kind of loads everything in and then everything smooths out for you. So we have that underneath that you have web integration. So here Spotify photo slideshow custom. So if we click on Spotify, you're going to need to link your account. So this is what I was just listening to here. So it shows the album artwork on this. Very cool. 
photo slideshow. If you have Google Photos, you can have that just kind of, and you get to select a bunch. But again, these would be personal photos, so I haven't done that. And then web integration, this one's interesting as well. So you click on this and it's giving you two popular ones, which is the NZXT YouTube page and the Google Trends here, and then the NZXT website. So I've clicked on the website and then you get to configure that and it's actually just going to showcase stuff from the website. So you get to integrate if there's some limitations that you're finding with the, the GIFs or the GIFs and then you want to do something else. This is a way to go about doing that. Very cool. Next, we have the dual infographic. Here, the different readings, right? And then you get to adjust the text here. And actually, before I go any further, because I was going to cover this initially, I totally forgot to. Rotate display, that's a big one here. So with the Z53 that I had, you had just these 90 degree turns. Now we have two points in between. So if we look at this, you can click on any of these and it's going to rotate that display. Boom. So the biggest thing here is obviously you have to save it, but let's go all the way over here. Make sure it highlights and we'll save that. Boom. So this gives you more freedom when you're installing this compared to the previous version, because usually you had to do the orientation that would make it so that it was completely lined up. Then you got this previous Kraken series and you could do it so, hey, you had these 90 degree turns, so there was more freedom. And now with these, you have the extra freedom now of what, two, four, six, eight different points here. So there's a lot more positions that this can go in. And I suspect eventually we'll probably just have a slider. So you just do this however you want, right? But let's go back here. So once we're here, choose whatever color you want, or you could do a custom color, right? And you could do it that way. Not gonna do that. So we have the dual infographic here, background, custom, make it whatever you want. I'm hoping over time, um, maybe a little bit more effects that we could get with that, which would be really, really cool. But you can integrate the GIF or the GIF with this. So this has been what I've personally been using and I've just le left it on white. Something else that I would like to see eventually is we need either an outline or maybe like a drop shadow to this. That way, depending on what it is, you can just see it a little bit more. Didn't do this on the previous version where I was actually looking through Jiffy there or Giphy there, but you get to keep these all in your library. If you don't like it, you just exit out. But once you have it, you just click on any of these that you want, right? And so you get to accumulate this massive library. Let's go ahead and leave it right there of different GIFs or GIFs that you have on this. And again, change it out whenever you want. Or down here, you get to do a carousel that we'll get to in a second where you get to swap these out if you wanted to. And you could have a bunch of different things that are popping up on this. Next though, we have the single infographic, CPU temperature, load, clock speed, liquid temperature, GPU load and clock speed, and then the GPU temperature there. So just leaving it on the CPU temperature. Again, you get to change the background, the text, anything you want with this. And then we get to change the gradient. So whatever color you want here or create your own custom one, which is very cool, right? And you have a lot more freedom with this, the main background and then how it's actually going to split the colors with this. Next, you have the single infographic. Let's go CP2, CPU temperature again with whatever we're going to integrate with that, right? And again, if we could just get, because depending again on the color, it might be harder to see on some of these. Might blend into whatever the object is. I'll try and find one that's a little bit more apparent with that. Right, so if we're doing that, obviously you just choose a different color, but if you were dead set on wanting yellow with this or green with this, it's just gonna be harder to see. Or if I left it on white, right? It's just gonna be harder to see. So 
outline drop shadow. That would be really nice eventually to see here. And I don't think that would be hard for them to do. That's probably just back end software stuff, right? After that, we have the carousel. Let's do this. Let's do an image. Let's do that. Let's do. All right, so that just crashed on me. That's happened a handful of times, but I did want to showcase that because it does happen. Um, this is where the software has come a long way. It doesn't crash as much, but it still does do that. But let's go clock face and then the duration here. How long do you want these things on here? Which I'm just throwing up a bunch of random stuff, but you could have it. So, hey, it's shifting from telling you the CPU temp to the GPU temp to maybe it's the load on the CPU, whatever it is. You have a lot of freedom here where you get to just add as many of these as you want. As far as I know, um, I haven't messed too much with this. I did it a little bit, but I didn't check how many you actually had here. So five is the cap. Um, but that's a lot of information. Again, setting the different durations all the way up to 30 seconds that you would want with this. So that is the carousel. And then we have the clock face here. And you get to do your custom gradients on this. You get to choose, is it a 12 or a 24 hour clock? Text dial, right? Let's go black with that dial. So you have that if you want it. And then the last one here is the audio visual. So I'm going to play a song here in a second so you can at least just see it working. But again, let's, you get to choose whatever the gradient's going to be here. You get to come up with your own and then how sensitive this is. So at this point, I don't want to showcase me actually pulling up the app or anything like that. That way it doesn't get flagged for any reason. But looking at this, you get to change the sensitivity here. It can be small or big. And then again, changing the gradient, you get to change the, you know, the colors in terms of inverting it, right? You get to come up with your own custom ones, which is awesome. And this actually crashed again on me with this. So we've seen a handful of crashes with this. I think it's just because I'm messing around so much with all the software, but again, it's not perfect. It is much better than it was, but you may experience these crashes. They're still doing the updates pretty often, but sometimes I also think it's like, man, this sh should be handled. Like this should be fixed. It shouldn't be crashing quite as much as it has been, but this is the software portion here and all the different things that you get to do with that. Let's now shift over to the performance and just showcase some games in some 4K exports that I've done with Adobe Premiere Pro. Not getting highly detailed here, just some information for you guys. That way, at least you have some metrics here. Starting with the boot here, it could be in the 70s and 80s. And then once Windows is kind of actually booting up, it'll be in the 60s and 70s. Then it'll hold steady at the low 50s and then it'll throttle up to the low 60s. So what I've seen is a range of 53 to 69. And with these Ryzen chips, that's just what they do, right? So they're always basically prepped and ready to go for any task. The room temperature is 72 degrees for all of these tests. And let's start with Destiny 2 here. The low was 52 degrees. The high was 66 while playing. And then the average that I was seeing while I was typically playing was 58 to 62. This is running everything in performance mode also when it comes to this. So what am I getting when I have it in performance mode? I'm not going to actually check the other modes. I'm not overclocking anything with this. So CPU isn't overclocked. They're not overclocking the GPU. This is just standard here, typically running this in 4K on my monitor. After that, we have Horizon Zero Dawn just doing their actual test that they have, their benchmark test. I was seeing 59 to 65 with an average hold at 60 to 61 degrees. The menu, when you would boot, it would actually peak at 88 degrees. Then after the test, the menu was holding about 67 degrees, and then it would go from 58 to 78 if I went to the main menu. So for whatever reason, it's actually hotter when you're running the menu. And the title screen itself is like 76 to 78 degrees. But then if you're playing the game, I was seeing 60 to 65 degrees for the temperature range with an average hold at 61 to 62 degrees. 
Moving on to Spider-Man, I had the temperature range of 61 to 65 while playing the game. And then within that, the average that I was seeing was 63 to 64 degrees. Next, we have Doom Eternal. With this, the temperature range while playing the game was 56 to 66 degrees, and then it held at 58 degrees the longest while I was playing. The peak that I saw was one minute of gameplay. It was 61 to 66. It kind of held with that, and then it went back down, and it only did that once. Last here is exporting a 4K video through Adobe Premiere Pro. With this, the temperature range was 61 to 84. For the first half of the video on this particular test, I made it so it wasn't demanding with this, right? We had mainly pictures and things like that. And with that, I saw 67 to 69 degrees. And what I wanted to see was if the first five minutes are not demanding, and then it is, how's it going to react? And then what are we gonna see with the temperatures there? And so the second half, it was 81 to 83 degrees with that. Just doing a regular 4K video, and it was just video itself, and so I didn't do like low demand and high demand, it was just 4K video with this. The temperature range was 65 to 83. The average temperature range that I was seeing was 80 to 82. So it was about a degree less than the previous test with this. So I think on average you can expect low 80s for the temperatures in performance mode when it comes to exporting 4K video. Now that's all the tests that I've performed. If you want anything more in depth, you want like zip files and things like that, again, wait for the Gamers Nexus video or some of the other channels that are out there because they will do far more in depth testing than I'm going to do here. The only test that I ended up getting out of the Z53 was a 20 minute 1440p video and that actually the highest that it hit in terms of the temperature with that was 97 degrees. I didn't get any other temps with that, but it did peak at 97 so it ran hotter I, I don't have a test to compare that to here and i didn't get as many metrics out of it that i wanted to regardless i would say it probably obviously just based off of the size of the fans this is going to perform better than the z53 just based off of the fan size because you have the bigger radiator and you have the bigger fans we should expect to see performance is better but I did want to cover and finish the video out with, I mentioned early on, there was a reason why I wanted to do the upgrade and it was because the pump on the Z53 was very noisy. So let's go ahead and cut over to that and I do wanna showcase footage as well when we cut back with the software and the actual display freezing. If you can hear that noise right there, that is actually the pump. And so that has been making a noise for about a year now. And honestly, I've just been too lazy to contact NZXT about getting it repaired. So that was from the original cut of this that I was trying to do before it just completely broke on me. So that's at that distance. You're not even close to the PC, but let's get close. And this is actually my sitting distance. And let's see what this actually sounds like from that position. So as you can tell, that would get quite annoying over time. I've just been too busy and lazy to try and send it back to get repaired. And I just can't be out on not having my PC for however long it takes them to fix it. So this was a good opportunity to finally upgrade the AIO, but also to hopefully send this back and get it repaired so I can potentially sell it if I even have that option or put it in another rig. But let's now do a sound test for the new AIO and you will hear, you don't really hear any sound out of this at all. So as you can tell, that is much quieter than the Z53 that I had. Again, that has an issue going on with it. But for me, being able to record video now where I'm actually 
in the video. I've been avoiding that because of that sound. Now I can get back to doing that, which is gonna be great. Shifting over to pricing, I'm pretty sure they're phasing out these old Krakens now because they're just sold out on the website. And maybe that's just because a bunch of people bought them. I don't know, but I would assume that the new Kraken in the Elite series is actually going to be their normal models here. But looking at the price, the Z53 for the 240 is $234.99. The one with the RGB lights is $254.99. If we jump up to the Z63, which would be the 280 mil fans, so the same size as the current one that I just got, that starts $254.99 for the one without the RGB fans, and then $274.99 if you do get it with the RGB fans. For the Elite 240, it is $239.99 for the one without the RGB fans, and then it is $259.99 for the one with the RGB fans. Looking at the 280 here, we have the one without the RGB fans, and that is $249.99, so it's actually $5 cheaper. And then if we're looking at the 280 with the RGB fans, it is $269.99, which is $5 cheaper than the Z63 version, right? Because we're gonna compare the 280 to the 280. Basically, we're looking at a $5 difference. It is $5 cheaper to get the new version of the Kraken here than the old version, which is sold out with everything, right? And actually, these ones are sold out too. It seems like a lot of times NZXT is just sold out of stuff, by the way. But if you are gonna choose, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Just go, obviously, with the newest version because you get all the upgrades to the display that I think a lot of people are really gonna want compared to the older version. And that's the stuff that I'm really happy with. I like all of these upgrades. Again, it's all quality of life stuff here, but with this, I think it's a step in the right direction if you do currently have the kraken z53 63 any of those i don't know if it's performing great i don't think you need to upgrade unless you just really want these new improvements i think on the performance side it's probably yeah a, a slight increase in performance because again i'm comparing a 280 to a 240 i'm assuming the 280 to 280 is very slim margin and with that, it's really, again, more to do with the improvements to the LCD screen here than anything. But at the end of the day, it is your money and you should do whatever you want with it. So if this does appeal to you, get it. If it doesn't, then don't buy it. So I'm going to have a link for this in the description if you want to pick it up. If you do have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section. I will make sure that I answer that for you there. And that's actually going to wrap this video up. This definitely went longer than I was anticipating it to go, but there was a lot that I wanted to cover with this in regards to this display and the upgrades that it has. So if you like the video, hit the like button for me as it helps the channel out if you want to continue to follow along with all my content hit the subscribe button and as always thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video